We're live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us, me, him, disembodied voice of TP. Hi! And in case you were wondering, that's the disembodied voice of TP. Hello! I'm Matt. I'm Josh. And I'm the disembodied voice of TP. Okay. So this is our <laughs> honest review section of our Spotlight stream, and we had the pleasure of doing Catacombs Conquest by Elzer Games this yeah. evening. Uh, we would like to point out that this weekend, this stream, and all of this week's streams are sponsored by Elzer Games with Catacombs Conquest. Currently live now on Kickstarter, going into the final 48 hours in five hours. So that's the final 53 hours, if you're a math nerd there. It's not really <laughs> nerd, it's adding five, but you know. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to do so, go back and watch the spotlight, even though I lost three times. Yeah, I just feel to be a loser. I don't like it. I don't like being the loser. So, as is tradition, uh, we like to start off the honors review section of the winner going over what their favorite parts of the game were. So, Josh, as much as I hate to say it, take it away. He's so I'm happy. just going to like relish in this for just a, just a minute. Because it's so I prefer, uncommon for you to win. I prefer mustard and onions, not relish. Um, I hate you. So, uh... This was a little dexterity slash card game. Mm -hmm. uh, the cards were to say what kind of moves you could do with the dexterity. Mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted to play the original Catacombs, which is a dungeon crawler one versus many dexterity Ooh. game. That's what the original one is. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Catacombs and Castles, which they actually gave us a copy of. Uh, uh, Dice all that great. You the bunch. Um, is a team versus team. A little bit bigger scale than this. That has more stuff going on. Okay. And then this is their lightweight in a box. Portable. Portable thing. And there's an optional mat that comes with it. I'm Matt. Uh, the mat's actually really nice. Thank is you. Matt, Matt? It's not shiny, if that's what you mean. That is what I mean. All right. So, everyone knows I like dexterity games. Uh, we it's, do know that. I don't know why, but I do. Everyone also knows that I'm absolutely atrocious at de dexterity games. I, don't and know I happen to be very good at them for whatever But he can't reasons. ride a bike. No, no. Uh, he, he trips over everything in this damn house. Yes. But give me things to hit my fingers and I'm good at it. I'm good at my fingers? Wait, what? That, yeah, that, that's a little weird. I just watch my face. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so it was, a, it was a dexterity game slash card game. Right. Um... Little arena. This is a two by three ish. Is it that big? Maybe. Uh, I'd say maybe one and a half by three. I think this is a twenty four inch by sixteen inch mat or fourteen. Inch oh, mat. then it's probably not. It, regardless. Yes. Yeah. It's it's got some table size. It's, it's a TP, if you want to size. pull up the board cam for a second, we can kind of show it off with uh, our hands in there. Or actually, even better, look, that's a standard card. Yep. So that's that's the board. It's a decent size. Um, so the game itself does not come off this mat. It's just the board, mm -hmm. with the walls, uh, and the mat's an extra thing you could buy. Oh, an extra add-on. It's an add-on. Um, the one thing is, it sounds weird. The mat actually doubles the price of the game. So the mat is the same cost as the game, but the game's, the game's cheap. only twenty bucks. Right. So it, that's worth noting is that the game's pretty cheap. <laughs> um, but no, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, so th one thing that's interesting is the two deck of cards, the skulls. And the swords. That's the two teams that you're the playing. The two teams you play as. The decks are, I believe, are identical. They seem that way. We could go do a head to head, but from what I've seen, we both played as each of the decks. Um, you see a lot of similarities. Yeah, they, 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 all the cards are the same action. So the, not one team has more special power over the other one. Right. Um, you'll see this card, and then there'll be another card, a, a different name. Right. Identical for the sword team. <coughs> um, but it's a nice little package. Um, and I had a lot of fun playing it. I, I, I like the dexterity mix with the, the card play mm -hmm. to add that little bit of strategy. Um, the one thing that's new in the Catacomb line for this is you get to actually move the terrain. Right. Which I think was a nice tactical advantage, even though we we're both horrible at doing it. Neither of us were good at that part. I think I did it correctly one time, but it actually saved my ass that turn. So it, it did have a lot to do with it. And I'm going to piggyback off of what you were saying. I really did enjoy the, uh, the fact that it wasn't a straight dex game. Yeah. The, the, there's a little bit of strategy from the cards. It's not a tremendous amount of strategy, and it's not meant to be a heavy strategy game. It's a light game, so that's completely understandable. TP, if you could put it back to, to the us. But, but I think the cards allow you, even if you're not very good at decks, you can use the cards to help balance it out. Make it so your shot's not that hard, so... Right, right. 
Um, I thought it was really interesting, too, seeing the different sized range attacks based off of what you were playing. So you've got the, the, the really small... And actually, it's thickness comes into to matter, too. So yeah. this is the, the arrows. That's your one range attack. Then you've got the bow. And the bow is... Well, it's a little bit easier to hit because it's like a full-on siege bow. It's a long bow. Long bow. That's what they call it. Uh, then you've got the... But that's also a lot thinner. It's also thinner. Right. So you, you have the issue there of not having as much mass. And the mass comes into play when you're going into these terrains because you're going to be ricocheting off of terrains yeah. if you have a, a smaller mass. So then you have your fireballs, which are the same diameter as your bow and arrow, but like twice the thickness there. Yeah. So that, those are significantly easier to hit the opponent with. And then finally, you've got this ridiculous thing. And this is the, uh, force, the force Blast. And this is big. It's probably half the size, half the mass of the terrain tiles. So it's a little bit thinner, and it's a little bit smaller diameter, probably half the mass. Yeah. But it allows you to not have to worry about the ricocheting as yeah. much. And these are the, show the character tile. Just the... <clears throat> the character tile is about the same size as the Fireball. They're similar, yeah. very close. Uh, but I, I really like that aspect just because it allows you to vary the game pieces with physics. Yeah, It's kind of cool. And also, I mean, the, the size comes into play because sometimes it's actually more beneficial for you to use the smaller ones so you can get around corners as opposed to the bigger one where you're going to be bumping into everything. Yeah. So I thought that was a really nice touch. I, I really did enjoy that. Um, what else did I like about the game? The... I, the artwork is really odd, and I, I don't know how best to describe it. It almost reminds me of like, there's a lot of hard lines in stuff. Yes. And it kind of reminds me of like, stained glass almost. Oh, like I, I don't know the best way to it's, put it. Uh, what is the cell, cell shade? It, well, it's it's a little cartoony, but it, it's got like a stained glass feel to me. So it's got kind of like a very classic castle motif to it which yeah. I thought was kind of interesting so it, it definitely does evoke that feeling which is really cool and I, I'm glad that they went that way with the art um, that reminds me of Woodmaker Zelda I never played that I know, so. but it's got that cell I don't remember the term of the art but it, I actually really like the art cell shaded oh. for the cartoony feel to it yeah um. and also it's just it's super simple to pick up the game like we got into the swing of things in like 15 seconds. Yeah. Less than a full round, you knew exactly what was going on. The only thing that we kept forgetting to do uh, was we kept forgetting to adjust our terrain tiles. Yes, yeah. at but. the end of the turn, you get to move terrain tile, we kept forgetting it, but... Uh, the only thing that would be nice, I know the back of the rulebook has a quick reference to things. Mm -hmm. uh, a card would be nice, too. And I was so just getting know. into that. Uh, we're going to move over, unless you had something else to say about what you liked about the game. Um... No, I think we got everything. So let's move over into the what wasn't our favorite part of the game. And I was definitely going to bring that up as well, is the quick reference guide. Uh, some of the, like, the symbols correlate directly to the, uh, the discs. So that's a bad example there. Uh, the fireball is the fireball. The, the bow is the bow. It's just, uh, if the fist is red, I want a reminder that that's what it is, but more importantly, the one that I'm I was most uh, I had to double take on was the the reticle around the uh, the fireball, and just remembering that that was a target uh, targeted shot, and what exactly that meant. But again, that's you kind of like you question it twice, and then you remember it. There's not a plethora of symbols that you have to memorize. There's, no, there's like a targeted, and then there's like five different icons or something. Right, and it's it's very simple to remember them. Um, the flow spells it out as easily as you could possibly imagine. Uh, but yeah, quick reference of just saying, draw your card, do your flow, do your special ability, unless it says to do it at a different point in time, and then move your terrain, and then flip your, your character tile from one color to the other. That probably would have been a ideal. Nice touch. A nice little touch, but it doesn't really detract yeah, that much yeah. from the game. I'm gonna hop back just one second to what I liked about the game. Okay. It's TP, if you could pull up the board cam for just one second, please. Uh, this is, it's kind of hard to see. There's shadow outlines of where to start the playing pieces. And I mentioned this during the uh, spotlight itself, but I thought there was a nice little touch to where to set up your pieces just because it's not these really hard outline. This is where you set it up. It's very subtle. It doesn't detract from the game. And 
I, don't, I mean, it's a little hard to see, like, this one over here, but at the same time, I kind of like that. It doesn't... Because it's, it's a cool-looking map. Yeah. Uh, other thing, no, things you like, the wall. Yeah. The wall system's cool. So the pieces don't go flying off board. Oh, my like God. We, yeah, that would have been... <sighs> yeah. Granted, too, uh, TV, if you could put it back to us, uh, just because you don't get the map with the actual uh, game, the base game itself, Yeah. it allows you to define an area. Yeah. Which is interesting, though, because then, by the sounds of it, the mat changes up the gameplay because it's as you go off the mat, you reset back onto it. But then if you don't have the mat, I'm assuming it's just you hit the walls and everything's kind of... Um, you can kind of move your piece and inch off the wall. Okay. So, like, so you have somewhere to hit. So okay. The, the mat kind of just de defines that area a little bit more. Okay. There might be a little bit more space, but it, it just defines it a little bit. I was thinking more in the terms of actual collisions, but... Yeah. It's not a big uh, deal. One of the rules in the game is, and with the mat, it really doesn't happen that much, is if you do hit the wall and it bounces back, yeah. it hits something, that doesn't count. Oh, okay. So you can't do a wall shot. Okay, so that's what I was thinking of. So it, yeah. that kind of negates no. it then. Fair enough. Then that, that, that takes care of that complaint. Uh, Josh, how about you? What is something that wasn't necessarily your favorite about the game? Um, the colors could have been a little bit more defined for my color blindness. It mm -hmm. wasn't a big issue. Uh, especially because each player's colors were different enough, but the blue and the purple. So, I'm actually gonna say the opposite what? for your card. So the this is green on the back side here. Just yeah. as a note, this is green around the area, but that's green and that's purple. Those yeah. are completely different for me. This blue and the gray, I got confused a couple times because the gray's got kind of a bluish tinge to it, and. The icon itself has a little bit of blue to it. Yeah. So I was mildly confused at a few times when I was playing as the skulls. Okay. So I would have liked a, a more contrasting color option between the two, even if it was black and blue. Okay. But other than that, that's it's not that big of a concern. Um, the other like minor thing is, and we didn't have to do this because they said it all first, so all these little discs have stickers on them. Yeah. Kind of nice if they were printed. Okay. I, I mean, it's... Not a requirement or anything, but... Um, that is to note, though, they did tell us that they're providing an extra set of character sticker discs. Uh, character and they look, actually look really cool because I like them. They actually have uh, some of the main character art on them. Ooh. So it's not representative of all the characters, but it kind of gives you a different thing. And they give you both options, so you can use the standard ones or the non-standard ones. Okay. So that is something to note. But yeah, I think because it would look pretty cool if they were printed directly on there. Um... I'm curious to see how they, they wear after an amount of time. Just because you're really handling these a lot because yeah. it's a dex game. Uh, that that might have been the reason why. You could actually put a new sticker on when your sticker wears off. That might Maybe. be a better... I game. mean, it's, it's, it's not like a real big downfall. It's when there, there is a setup of the game where you have to mm -hmm. put stickers on everything. And, and act, there's actually a section in the rulebook of like what stickers go to which disc and stuff. And they actually have it all in a pretty... Because there's all these different size discs. And yeah, obviously. there's like, there's a bunch of different size discs here, which I think <coughs> that adds to it a lot. Yeah. Um. Aside from that, I actually really like the. I was gonna say maybe more variety in the character powers, but I think it's just because we have the same power set, and I kind of would have liked to have seen maybe unique power sets for the different teams. But I see why that didn't happen, because if one was slightly more accurate you know one was slightly better than the other one in some way shape or form then it would cause yeah. some disparity so I can see why that was done so like with and this is supposed to be very lightweight easy to travel I believe in Catacombs and Castles yeah you get more of that you have two different teams okay. and then you can pick which characters you want which have certain traits okay and that that all falls back into line with this being their their lightweight yeah this game. is a lightweight game that's supposed to be portable and everything like it comes in a box that this is the box I got it in. It's just a shipping box, mm -hmm. but I think the actual box itself is about this size. Okay. Like maybe just this, like, squared. All right. Uh, so, Josh, do you have anything else that you want to speak to about uh, what wasn't your favorite part of the game? I think that's it. I, I think everything was laid out pretty well, and it was, I had fun. Okay. And then it. Uh, I'm going to do a brief summary here before we get into the most important question. Uh, so... This is a game that's very compact, it's very tight, and I thought that was, that 
adds to both its strengths and its weaknesses of the game itself. Yes. But overall, I feel like it did a very good job with everything. Um, with that, I would like to ask now, starting with you, is this a game that you would play again? Yes, I would beat your body count. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know you're very fond of Dex games as well. Um, I'm going to say I'm gonna, I would like to try it again, but I, I really want to try it with the full four-person Versus two v two, yeah, two v two, just because I felt like you're very bad at it. Yeah, well, maybe you told me on my team, so you win. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I I feel like it would be more interesting because because I'm bad at it. I feel like I'm just constantly behind the eight ball. So if I'm able to like play support to someone else's main role, okay, I would enjoy it more. Okay. But that goes to my own personal downfalls in these styles of games. Uh, but again, I, I would play it again. And maybe the other line games might play better. better your style. Yeah, I, I think uh, I would have to try that out, just because I think this is a little light for my taste, and it's a dex game. Dex games tend to be a little lighter, but that sounds really interesting, the, the main full-on yeah, uh, this dungeon is, crawl dex game. Well, this is a... Like this one, but it goes 2 to 8. Right. And then everyone has their own character that has certain skill cards skills and stuff right um, that you can level up and stuff like that and then uh, the main catacombs game is the dungeon crawl one versus many okay so I'd, I'd like to try those as well but again this is a first look at, yeah. at our games we're not doing you know 35 playthrough reviews but uh, this was our honest review section yeah. of catacombs conquest by Elzer games currently live on kickstarter so if you could please post that link in chat tp and we would like to shout out Catacombs Conquest and Elzer Games for being a wonderful sponsor this week and providing the game for us, uh, as well as sponsoring this stream and all this week's streams. So with that, is there anything else that we need to touch on? I think that's everything. All right, so thank you all for joining us this evening. We're going to be doing yet another soft sign-off here before we get into the meat and potatoes. But this is Twist Gaming signing off of our spotlight of Catacombs Conquest. I'm Matt. Josh. And I'm the disembodied voice of PTP. PT. PT. Thank you, everyone, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. Bye.